If you need truth, this is the place for you. Don't need to complicate it. It's best to keep it basic. Uh, open the book, the word is self-approved. He's alpha and omega, the answer since the early ages. What you should do is learn about the greatest. Just so you know, our door is always open. Let's study together instead of debating. Share our differences. Let love heal all that's broken. And shalom aleikum to each and every one of you here today. We're glad to have you with you on the proceeding word. This is yours truly, Apostle B.W. Jones Sr. We're going to be sending invitations out to each and every one of you to have microphones so that we can discuss what we will be talking about today. Again, we welcome you to this programming. We will give you just a few announcements before we get started right into it. I think you're going to find it intriguing. If you're reaching us and being with us on the Proceeding Word on Facebook and YouTube, we want you to make sure you take opportunity to like the page, subscribe to the YouTube, make comments on the actual pages, and let us know where you're hailing from. Those of you on Clubhouse, you may need to go over today to uh, one of those visuals because I do have my chalkboard with me today. We're gonna to be using demonstrations with visual pictures to help get concentration on the actual concepts we want to be conceived. So let's get started. Well, one of the first things we want to do is make sure that you guys know that we are here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. ish Eastern Standard Time. As you can see today, it's 1.39. Uh, but my artistic flow sort of kind of left me a little bit under the under 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 the time frame, and uh, we had to learn how to do that thing a little bit better. Um, so at the end of the day, what we want you to realize is that um, we're here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and then on our Wednesdays as well, we have our Bible studies that will be on the Rise Kingdom Ministries, and that's where we will be with that. So I hope that you all will look to join us there as well. The Rise Kingdom Ministries is a very unique ministry where we teach everything as we learn it from Torah and we share so that we can have a better understanding of how to have a relationship with the Father, more so than the religiosities that we have come under by religion and its fettering and its tethering. However, if it is within the writ, that makes it a great thing. All right, so now back to the purpose of why we're here today. We'll also be here on Thursdays to do what we call our Bible Book Club. Every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're here. Those of you who are in Clubhouse, if you go over to the Bible Book Club actual house, you can join there and become a regular and get notified when we go live, just as you did on the preceding word and on the DKM ministries pages after the thursdays we go right into our sabbath every friday at sundown until saturday at sundown is our shabbat and we work within that concept to give the idea of what his word says and that is to study his word alone isaiah chapter 58 verses 13 through 14 we come not speaking our own words but speaking his words that we might learn him in a greater and a better way and then after that Sabbath study, we go into what's known as our Darash Kingdom Ministries Morrow After Sabbath, Morrow After Sabbath study, and that's every Sunday at approximately 10, 15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we are here to, con to continue what we teach in Darash Kingdom Ministries, and that is all things Torah and how it relates to us in our concept of religiosity today and where our relationship with the Father can grow, be enhanced, and we as a people move together in Him. Oh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. All right, everybody. So we got you caught up on all of our actual announcements. And now we're going to produce today's broadcasting. And we got quite a bit to go over because the broadcast today is about the actual title of the broadcast. I find that very interesting as well because many people don't know what it means to actually hear or deal with what is considered the proceeding word. We say it, we think we understand it, but today you're gonna learn. How about that? Is that okay if we just learn today? I'm looking forward to it. Shall we take a moment to pray? Let's do that right now. Father, we thank you for your word, will, and plan. We thank you for the purpose. We thank you for the existence of why you have given us life. We thank you for life itself. We're asking you now to be with us, in us, and through us for your name's sake and for your praise. We surrender all that we are to you. Uh, I literally surrender the vessel that you made called VW to you, however you want to use it. You can 
shut it up. You can make it speak. You can make it dance. It is yours to control. I give you me. And that I give you because of the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. I am grateful. Cleanses me from my sin. You have taught us that if we confess our sin, you are faithful. You are just to forgive us. And then you would cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And thereby we now stand in you, by you, properly in place instead with you. So today, your words are what help man live. Today, help us to explore what it means when you say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of you, Yahweh, our Elohim. We bless you, we thank you, and we magnify your name in this moment. Speak to your people that we might learn, show us that we might see, and Father, we ask you to be glorified in all things done and spoken this day. All right, everybody, good to have you, good to see you. Let's get started in our programming for today. Um, you'll see behind me, I have a little globe, and then I've got some ones and o's that are coming uh, on our platform. But I want to really talk about the purpose for why we are in this subject today, because we don't really think that it's a real thing to live by Elohim's word. And it really is something we should consider and understand that without his words, we don't have life. And because of life and because of him, we alone move, we alone have our being, and in him alone, pardon me, in him alone we have our being, in him alone we move, in him alone we live. And these are the things that we need to make sure we are conscious of before we just start making, start making moves without his presence, without his guidance, and without his purpose. So today, I want you all to really embrace this moment, and I want you to take opportunity to consider something you had not thought about. You know I'm going to go deep, so just prepare for it. Stop acting like you don't know. And we're going to make sure that you pay attention to something you had not considered previously. All right, if you got questions, you'll be able to ask those at our Q&A portion on this particular broadcast today. I'm going to try and be very quick and expeditious. So as you all know, the Bible declares that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh, who is our Elohim. And we take this seriously because of what was written to us in Devarim chapter 8, verse 3. Pardon me, Devarim 8, 36. And many people don't realize that Messiah said this when he came in the earth. But at the end of the day, what he was really discussing was something that was from Torah. And he never, ever took it and made it an unrealistic issue. So let's look at this. Deuteronomy, I said Deuteronomy 8. Verse number three. Let's go. Devarim eight and three. You ready? Messiah made the statement. Well, should I give it to you from Messiah's perspective first? Let's do that. Let's let's make that happen first. Where did Messiah um, make the statement so you cannot you and I can all understand this? So let's go there real quick. Let's go there real quick. Matthew chapter four, come on. Matthew chapter four, verse four. Look at what Messiah says, and we're gonna sort of kind of reverse engineer this so you can catch this. Watch the dynamic of what's being said here and look at how it plays out for us in the earth today. All right, so everybody pay attention. Here we go. Get into the word. Shalom, excuse me, Apostle. Yes. You're, you're not on screen. I'm aware, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So well, I want y'all to catch this so we can see this. And thank you very much for letting me know. But we are giving you this image because I want this image to stay in your mind. That's why I'm preferring most of you will go over to Facebook, go over to YouTube and watch the graphics we're giving you because the pictorials help to aid the process. All right. So now as we move forward, taking this word and putting it forward, we're going to grid it on the bottom. We're going to pull it on the screen for you. We're going to remove the image I've given you. We've made pain, which is why we're late. We needed to find this image that did as best it could. And the graphics we use may not be exactly as I want them, which is why we then took the, took, made the choice to actually have my chalkboard with me today as well. So now we have the word on screen with you. Here you go. And we're going to remove the image of the proceeding word and its topic and its title, which is done on purpose. So you can now see the word. Matthew chapter 4. Y'all ready? Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 4. Verse number four. We're going to start at verse one because we always read how, y'all, in KYC. How do we read the text? Three up and three down. 
three up and three down. All right, let's get going. Let's get moving. Let's get showing what we got to do with that. Matthew chapter four, verse number one. The text we want is verse four, but we're going to come from verse number one to get a clear concept. Listen to these words because they're going to play out later on. Then was Yeshua led up of Ruach HaKadosh into the wilderness to be tempted of HaShatan, the devil. Verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of Elohim, command these stones to be made bread. Listen, y'all, because we're going to take a minute here to really break this part down. He says, if you be the son of Elohim, let me ask you a question before I move further. According to how the Hebrew determines uh, the Elohim, you have Yahweh, you have Adonai, you have Ruach HaKadosh. Let me say it again. I'm going to come off screen so you can see it. When you understand what Elohim is, you understand that is the plurality, yet the singularity of his divinity. So you have Elohim. Matter of fact, I'm going to put it on the screen so you guys can see it. Um, from the digital world, all right? Where is my key to Elohim? There you go. So Elohim is God, right? Okay. Elohim is the Hebrew word for God in its plural sense. One, one of the definitions is he is the creator of heaven and earth and all that therein dwells. Two, it is the plurality yet the singularity of Elohim's existence as divine. Some of you call it three in one. What some Christendom deals with unnecessarily is this concept of Trinitarianism, Trinity, yada, yada. Let's move on past that. So key elements, the key to Elohim. Within Elohim consists three distinct personages or attributes. Yet those attributes and personages are one. The first attribute is Yahweh. You see that as capital L-O-R-D in your Bibles all throughout the Old and New Testament. And this Yahweh means God the Father in the American vernacular. Then you have the second attribute or personage we call Adonai. You see that in capital L, small O-R-D, 90% of the time, and it references God the Son. Then you have Ruach HaKadosh, which is the Holy Spirit. Those three are Elohim. They are not three separate people. They are not three separate things. They are Elohim. You and I were made in his image and in his likeness, and we are a lot like that, but they are Elohim. Now, here's the catch. Yahweh, number one, is God the Father. He is the thought process. So he thinks. That's why Jeremiah says, I know my thoughts concerning you, thoughts of good, not of evil, thoughts to give you an expected end. Number two on the key to Elohim is the name Adonai, which is God the Son. He is the, enunci uh, the enunciator of the thought. I need everybody to come off mic if you got a microphone and say, he is the word. One, two, three, go. He is the word. He is the word. Now, when we catch this, we embrace this, we understand this, we sort of kind of set with this. I want to make sure you are clear with it, that he lets you know as Adonai, he is God the Son. He is the enunciator of thought. He is the word, the administrator, right? Then you have the third attribute, which is Ruach HaKadosh. He is the Holy Spirit, all right? He is the performer of the spoken word. So let's get this straight. Yahweh is the thought process. Number two, Adonai is the enunciator of the thought. Number three, number three, Ruach HaKadosh is the performer of the spoken word. So Yahweh thinks, Adonai speaks, and Ruach HaKadosh performs. Don't forget that. We'll come back to that shortly 
in just a few moments. All right, let's get into the word now. I want you all to pay attention to this because it's really, really good. If you watch it, it is extremely good. Hey there, Pastor Ward. Good to see you, Doc. Good to have you with us. All right, Elder Rogers, good to be with you today. Shalom aleichem to you. Now, watch this as we move quickly into this next piece. Let's get back into the writ, Matthew chapter 4. So I'm going to reread chapter 4. It's going to give you a whole different viewpoint now. Then Yeshua HaMashiach was led up, Yeshua, Yeshua, the human being on the earth, was led up of Ruach HaKadosh into the wilderness to be tempted by HaShatan, verse 2, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry, verse 3, and when, he, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of God. So what's he saying, y'all? If you be the word of God command these stones that they be made bread. Oh, you mean it was in there the whole time? Right. But he answered and said, it is written, man, humanity, who you're really trying to affect, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of, out of the mouth of Elohim. So tell me y'all, what comes out of the mouth of Elohim? Does anybody know what comes out of the mouth of Elohim? Does anybody know what comes out of the mouth of Elohim? You can type it in, come on Facebook, you can type it in. I need your, I need your, I need your key marks. Say it again, say it louder. All right, I couldn't hear you. Some in the background had you smuggled it out. So it's, I think you said his word. So the mouth of Elohim is his word. So when we deal with the fact that the word of Elohim is what commands things, I want you to realize what he actually said in the next verse, right? Watch this. Verse number three. When the tempter had come to Yeshua, he said, we're not sure, but if you be the word of Elohim, if you be the son of Elohim, Command these stones, because that's what the word does. When it speaks, things happen. Command these stones that they be made bread, because he knows the creative power of the word. Oh, y'all missed it. I want to jump, but I'm going to sit still because we're not there yet. Nobody going to throw up a praise hand or nothing. Okay, let me finish. Watch this. He says, if you be the son of Elohim, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, ah, it is written since you don't know. Man shall not live, humanity shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Elohim. So as, as you notice, something takes place here. The next thing you see is that in verse five, then the devil took him up into a holy city, set him on a pinnacle because he did not get the answer he wanted. He could not tell if this was Elohim in humanity. Now watch this because we got to go a little bit deeper because now you're saying, well, you're being subjective and you're taking things out of context, apostle. You know, this is really not the best way to travel. Let me help y'all. Let me help you real quick. Now, when we see Yeshua HaMashiach make this statement, reverse engineering, Messiah always said, I did not come to destroy the Torah, nor the prophets who propagated the Torah. I came to show you how to live the Torah. Would you guys agree that that's what he said? I can prove it in Matthew chapter 5 if you want. I just need y'all to let me know I said the right words. Yes. Pay attention. Yes, Pay attention because this yeah. gets deep. So he says, man shall not live by bread alone. Why does he say that? Oh, because he came to promote the Torah. Well, as you now know, the Torah in Devarim chapter number 8 makes this very same statement. Wow. Verse number 1, Bible on screen. Devonim chapter 8, look at it. This is where it comes from. Many of you never knew this. You just thought Yeshua was talking off the top of his head. He's only quoting the writ. Devonim chapter 8, verse 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do them, that you may live and multiply. Wait a minute. All the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do, that you may live. Do I need to stop right there or should I keep going? I can stop right there, but I won't. Oh, please tell me y'all with this today. All the, all the commandments, <laughs> all the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do that you may live 
and multiply. Let me let me let me pause for a second because I need some theologians to, to, to really work with me here and rock with me here. Listen, watch this. People already know that whoever is speaking in Devarim is Elohim. Devarim is probably the most central book of Elohim directly, directly speaking his commandments to the people. You got Devarim 28, where you say, you know, if you keep these commandments, you're blessed in the city, blessed in the field. You know those, right? You got Devarim telling you when Elohim would have Moshe to say, hey, listen, go up to the mountain. I want to take you out of here. You're not going over. So we know that Devarim is Elohim speaking directly to Moshe to tell Moshe what to give the people as the edict of Elohim. So we know when he says, I command you, this ain't just some human being. This is Elohim speaking to humans about what he wants done. So this is the mitzvah. This is part of the Torah. It is a major contributor to how you and I live. Watch all the commandments which I command you this day, verse one, you shall observe to do that you may live and multiply. And these instructions or what you're going to do when you go in to possess the land which Yahweh have swore unto your fathers. Listen, verse 2. Thou shalt remember all the way which Yahweh your Elohim has led you these 40 years in the wild place, in the wilderness, in order to humble you. Oh, so you mean your wilderness place is a humbling experience? Wait a minute. Hold on. We on the preceding word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh your Elohim. So the words that just came out of his mouth, did you read the words that was coming out of Elohim's mouth? He said he took you through your wilderness to ha, 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 humble you. And you thought it was the devil on your tail. You thought you was, I'm running for my life. I'm running for my That's what you thought. Listen, the wilderness is there. The wild place is there to humble you so you know the power of the world to tame the wildness around you. Can I get a whoop whoop? I'm feeling really good. This is Wednesday trying to get y'all through the hump days. Y'all all right with you? We got a couple more things to talk about. You ready? Listen, wrote a song about it. I'd like to hear it. Well, not yet, but let's read the written, see what he says. Are y'all okay with this? Nobody saying, wow, nobody talking to me. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Listen to this. Look at this quickly. I want y'all to grab this. So look at verse number two. He says, you shall remember all the way which Yahweh your Elohim led you these 40 years. Uh, I don't know why I feel a prophetic moment right now, but I need y'all to understand that Yahweh is trying to instruct you that you must remember when you start reading his word, when you when you start keeping Shabbat, when you start honoring his Torah, when you start learning his word and speaking his words alone, you must understand Yahweh will cause you to remember, watch this, where he brought you from. Oh, my goodness, I feel like jumping right now. I don't know what just came over me. But you need to understand that Elohim wants you to be able to rightly, not in some uh, ruminating way, but in a, 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 a remembering of how he brought you out of what you were into. And you didn't even know how bad you was in. And you know when you was out there wilding out? Anybody was out there wilding out like I was wilding out? Some of y'all still wilding out today. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, talk to me. So we wilding out and he's in, we're in the wild place and yet he is we're telling us to remember where I brought you from. And y'all song is, we sang a song in Christian, right? Which I think ignorantly really assesses that matter. And it goes on to say, you know, when I think back over my life, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. And then y'all add it. I have a testimony. Right. Uh, but did you know that this is what Elohim had always said to be done? You didn't learn that when you got to Christian church. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you. We're going to walk through this real quick. 
Did you know that that was always the intention of Elohim? So whenever he started bringing you out and you were going into your promised land and you got out of your wild place, you would know that he was the one keeping you in the wild place. So you would know where he had brought you from all these years through the bad marriage, through the bad relationships, through the abusiveness, through the drug addictions, through the alcoholism. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Uh, through the rape, to, through all the things that went on. He says, I want you to remember what I brought you through. So I brought you this far not to leave you. But I brought you this far to lead you. Somebody make that a quote for me. I brought you this far not to Ellie. L-E-A-V-E-U. Uh -uh. I brought you to L-E-A-D-U. Come on. I didn't bring you this far. I didn't keep you alive. I didn't make you move. I let you live because of my word. And in the wild place, I kept my hand on you. And now I need you to think back to when I humbled you, when you came out of what you got yourself into, when you had that charge and no one could get it off of you, when you had that disease and no one could get through with you, when you had those circumstances and the doctor said, we don't know what to do, your wild place of not knowing whether you were to live or you're going to die or you're going to make it or you were not going to make it. I just need you to remember it was me keeping you. Now that you know I kept you, let me show you why I kept Let me show you. Now that you know that I kept you, let me show you why I kept you. Now let's go into the promise land I have for your life. Now you might say that is metaphoric. You might say that is isogetical. You may say that is subjective, but there is a prophetic function that flows in what Elohim's words say. Remember where you came from. Don't forget who you were. Don't forget how you were. Don't forget you were a bondman in a land, strange, and using you for the resource of you for its purpose. And Elohim said, no, you need to be your own sustainable element. I need you to create and to prepare my kingdom in the earth. So I'm bringing you out of that slavery. I'm bringing you out of that bondage. I'm bringing you out of that Egypt. But to get you into the place where you now are helping to run my kingdom in the earth, I got to humble you in the wilderness. I need about five people just to type, just type it in and say, I've been humbled. I've been humbled. I've been humbled in my wilderness. So now look at the writ. Let's get going. I got to get going because we only got a few more minutes left here so I can help you with this particular place. I don't see enough of y'all saying I've been humbled in my wilderness. I've been humbled in my wilderness. Let me do it. I've been humbled in my wild place. All right, let's go. Look now at what we say here. This is very good. This is very interesting. So now the Bible goes on to let us know these words. He says in verse number, I'm going to start again, verse one, all the commandments which I command thee this day, you shall observe to do them that you may live, that you may live, that you may live and multiply and that you may go in and possess the land which Yahweh has sworn unto you and your fathers. Verse two, thou shalt also, thou shalt also remember all the way which Yahweh your Elohim led you these 40 years in the wild place to humble you and to prove you. Y'all know that your wild place was there to prove you. Y'all know that your wild place was there to prove that you know Elohim and you don't know how just to preach about him, but you know what he'll bring you through. My goodness, I feel this in my bones right now. You have been literally brought through those wild places so you will know that only Elohim brought you out. No, it wasn't your mother that did it. No, it wasn't your daddy that did it. No, it wasn't your sugar daddy, your sugar mama. No, it wasn't your pastor. No, it wasn't your brother. No, it wasn't your sister, nor it wasn't your job, nor it wasn't your wit. It was Elohim alone. Somebody say, he's been good to me. He's been good. He's been good to me. Yes. So he says in verse number two, he says, Elohim brought you through the wilderness to humble you and to prove you to know what is in your heart. Oh, anybody learn about yourself? And anybody learn about yourself when you've been dropped on your head? Anybody learned about yourself when you thought you was everything and everything failed you, but you thought you were so fly and suddenly life hit you like only Elohim can bring it and you realize I ain't nothing. I'm just a vapor. I don't know about y'all, but I can confess that and I'm glad to confess it. I thought I was something at one time. Mm -hmm. To this day, I realize I have nothing but a vessel to till this ground and I will only be great in him. I ain't trying to be great for nobody else. I ain't trying to make no big monuments. I'm trying to build what he wants built and do what he wants done. So I'm going to say, I am, all caps, his. I ain't nothing else but his. Y'all don't hear me. Get it? The I am his.
is. All right, I got to move on. That's the prophetic element that's happening right now. I got to keep this thing wrapped up. Watch this. Watch this. Verse number two, one more time. You will remember all the ways Yahweh led you these 40 years in your wilderness to humble you. Mm -hmm. And then watch this. And then watch this to prove you. Watch this. And then to know what was in your heart. Mm -hmm. Because you thought you knew what was in your heart until Yahweh showed you what you was about, until Yahweh showed you what you was missing, until Yahweh showed you what needed to be done, until Yahweh showed you how you got in this mess. Now you know, you know what? I'm nasty. I'm going to talk to y'all right quick. I'm going to get off this before I hit verse three. Yeah, because some of us needed to realize, you know what? I'm, I'm a mess. Matter of fact, I'm a hot mess. And you know what? Quite frankly, Yahweh don't bless mess. And in my heart, I'm finding out in this situation that I got people mad at me and I'm mad at people. I'm probably the biggest problem for the problem. I'm probably the biggest reason for the problem. I got some junk in my heart. I need to give to the Father. I need to get out of my heart. I need to pull a David. I need to get his word in my heart that I might not sin against him. Because what's in my heart right now keeps me sinning against him. Anybody know you got to find out what's in your heart before Yahweh can really use you? And if you got mess in your heart, Yahweh don't bless mess. And you wonder why you're not in your promised land. Because if you read verse 2, he's very clear. Yeshua was trying to tell us. Man don't live by bread alone. Man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh, who is our Elohim. And his words, look at verse one, look at verse one very quickly, just so you can see it. These things are not, 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 you're looking at that. I didn't make this up. Verse one says, to, he says, my words, which I command you this day, you are to observe them. You are to do them that you may live. and multiply. My words you must observe so you can go in and possess the land. Oh, good Lord, help me, Father. Y'all, I'm not supposed to be going this direction. I'm supposed to be teaching y'all about what the word did in the beginning. Listen here, he says you can't live. You can't even possess the promised land. You can't even possess your dream. You can't even possess the prophecy you think the prophet gave and prophesied over you because you got to observe his words in order to possess the land in which Yahweh is swearing to give you. Somebody say, I need his word. I cannot possess the land. Verse one, verse one, part B. You must observe this, that you may live, that you may multiply, and that you may go in to possess the land Yahweh has swore unto you. I need his word. I need his word. And then while you're going in, because you obeyed my word, I want you to remember why you're walking over the threshold of the promised land, why you're walking over the threshold of the prophecy, why you're walking over the threshold of your dream, why you're walking over the threshold of your desires. You will remember, ah, it was hard getting here. Now, I was humbled because I thought I could just do what I wanted to do. I thought because somebody taught me something in school, I could just do it and it get done. I didn't realize there was obstacles. I didn't realize there was uh, opposition. I didn't realize there was antagonism. I didn't realize that I was not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. I did not remember. I did not consider. But now that I look back over it and I realize I had to be humbled so I could find out what was in my heart and what was in my heart was not all about Elohim. It was about me flexing. It was about me shining. It was about me having a big name. It was about me having my so-called dreams that were really petty concerning the things what Elohim would want from me. I don't know about you, but I need his word. And when we realize what Elohim is trying to get us to see is some of the things that we've gone through, they humbled us so we could check our own hearts. Now, I didn't come on the preceding word today to preach. Y'all know I don't do that. We just talk about the writ. But let's look at what he was telling us. I don't know about you, but I need his word to possess my promised land. Amen. And while walking over that threshold, mm, viewership just dropping left and right. Mm, 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 mm. I guess we don't need his word. That's probably why we haven't possessed it. Look at this right here. Look at this right here. Look at this right here. Look at what he says. Look at what he says. In verse number three. And he humbled you. He suffered some of us to have hunger. Now, I find this interesting because he brought us out of the mire and the clay. What was in Egypt, y'all? Mire and clay. He brought me out of the mire and clay. He placed my feet on a rock to stay. Hmm. 
Now, I'm curious, is there something going on with our YouTube, Facebook? Because we're dropping viewership way too quick. Is anybody still viewing on YouTube? If you're on YouTube, let me know you're on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, let me know you're on Facebook. Clubhouse, talk to me, please. Facebook, sir. Rogers is on Facebook. Who's on YouTube? The on YouTube. Are you still saying it? On YouTube. Okay. Her name is on yes, YouTube. I can still see it. All right, because our viewership just drastically plummeted. Okay. Now, watch this very quickly. Elohim is saying in verse number three, he brought us out. So, what was in Egypt? mire and clay amongst other things but he did bring us out of our egypt so when you talk about he brought me out of the mire and the clay he placed my feet on a rock to stay he put a song in my soul to sing it's a song of praise about how great he is and that song goes this way hallelujah way all right. So now some of you never heard that that way, but you just learned something today. So now watch what goes on next here with what he does. He goes on to let us know in verse number three, he says, and he did all of this one to humble us three. And he did humble you and he suffered you to have need of hunger so that he would be the one feeding you and you wouldn't be confused about it. Did y'all hear that? He suffered them to be in hunger so that they could know in the wild place they were in, they couldn't feed themselves. But to prove to them, he's going to be with them. And as he told them, I am that I am. I'm going to bring you out whatever you have need of while you follow me out of Egypt. I'm going to be that. Somebody say, he's my I am that I am. Come on, say, he's my I am that I am. He is that. Verse 3 says, he humbled you and he suffered you to hunger and then feed you with manna, which you knew not. Neither did your fathers know about manna, that Elohim might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh, your Elohim. Let me help y'all. Let me help y'all. Remember Matthew chapter four, when Yeshua made the statement and he said in clarity, verse number four, do you understand what he said in Matthew chapter four, verse number three? He says, when the tempter came to you, right? When the tempter came to Messiah, look at what he did. When the tempter came to Messiah, he says, if you be the word of Elohim, the word that proceeds at the mouth of Elohim, if you be that, command these stones that they may be made bread. What does he tell them in Devarim before Yeshua puts a demonstration on for you all in the chapter of Matthew? Look at what he says in Devarim. Chapter number eight, look at what he says in verse three. He says, he humbled you to suffer that you would hunger so that you could see him feed you. Because he fed you with something you didn't even know existed. Your fathers didn't even know about this. He did this so that you might know that you're not going to live by stuff you see. You're going to live by my word. I need you to shout hallelujah. So he says, I did, did look at what it says. He says he suffered you 40 years. He suffered you to be hungry in the field before he took you to the promised land where you could sustain yourself. But he suffered you to be hungry in the wild place so that you would have to depend on him to feed you. So, you know, he could do whatever need be done. He did bring you quail. Y'all just read that. He brought you quail from the sea. No, no, no. He didn't bring you quail from the trees. He brought you quail from the sea. How many of you remember that teaching just a few days ago? 
My heart is so hurt right now. Okay, so we're gonna start again. When Elohim, when, when, when Elohim, when Elohim brought them quail in Devarim, and he did it twice. When he brought them quail, he didn't bring them quail from the trees where they was living. He made them fresh from the waters where he created birds on the fifth day. And he brought them fresh to Israel so they could have it to eat because they complained. And he wanted to make sure they had so much that it was coming out their noses. And yes, some of them, because of their complaint, not knowing he would be whatever they needed, like he promised when they brought him out. Moshe asked Yahweh when they were in Egypt, he says, listen, when I go to let them know that this is going to be done, what God should I tell them is sending me? He says, tell them Yahweh. Tell them the I will be that I will be has sent you. The one they've been waiting on since Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Tell them that I will be whatever they need. I'm the one who is sending you. So when he went back and told them, I was told to tell you, Yahweh is delivering us. He will be whatever we need. And as soon as they got free, they bugged out and thought that they needed to depend on leeks, onions, and grain. And Yahweh was like, my word is what you live by, not the stuff my word made. So now let's look at this. <laughs> y'all, you might want to rewind this. I'm going to stop at an hour so y'all can go back and rewind this. Y'all don't need to listen to this again. Listen, listen, look at what he says. Help me, Ruach. So now I'm going to show this on the board. Look at the board. Now, I, I did this preemptively uh, so I didn't have to do it live time with y'all. And, and it may not make sense to you, but I'm going to break it down for you. So you can see here on the platform, if you go to YouTube, uh, BWJ Ministries on YouTube or BWJ Ministries on Facebook. Those of you who are on Clubhouse, you will be able to see uh, this, uh, my pencil drawing and stick drawing uh, and, and my aid and my help. So listen, um, <laughs> this little ball, this sphere in the center is the earth, right? It is a third rock from the sun, right? But if you notice, there are these ones and O's. We're going to call them and type them as words. You know them because of your internet language, but we're going to use them because it was easier to write that than to make a whole bunch of words, okay? So you know that these are symbolic elements of communication and language. Now, they are coming from a higher place, right? So they're coming from heaven. Let me move this out of the way so y'all think they're coming from BWJ. How about I do that? Bada bing, bow. There you go. So they're coming from the top, way above heaven. They're coming from Shamaim, all right? Now, in the Shamaim, in the heavens, is where Elohim resides. And Elohim is the thought, right? Yahweh is the thought. Adonai is the word. So in the Shamaim, where he resides, Elohim, thinking, now speaks Adonai into existence. But let's go to Genesis chapter 1 so we understand this in clarity. Do y'all want to learn a little bit more? Can we help with that? Y'all want to learn some more? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to break this down. Because man shall not live by bread alone. Man has never lived by bread alone. Man has only always lived by the word of Elohim. Watch. We were reading it and still didn't see it. Y'all ready? All right. So, verse 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Was there a man on it? Nope. And the earth was without form. The earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. Elohim said that there be light. There was light. Elohim saw the light. It was good. Elohim divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5. Elohim called the light day and night darkness. The evening and the morning were the first day. Elohim said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters and let the divide waters from the waters. Verse 7. Elohim began. Look at this. I'm sorry. I'm just reading so fast and y'all not even on the screen. Here you go. The Bible's up there for you to see it. Watch. Look at this closely. Verse 6 says, and Elohim said, let the firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Elohim made the firmament. He divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and so it was elohim called the firmament heaven the second and, uh, and the evening and the morning were the second day verse 9 elohim said that the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place and the dry land let it appear and it was so elohim called he said he called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas elohim saw that it was good elohim then said somebody say he spoke somebody say he spoke somebody say he spoke he 
spoke. He spoke. Let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed, fruit yielding fruit after its kind, seed itself, and upon the earth, and it was so. Verse 12, the earth brought forth the grass, the herb yielding seed, the trees, whose seed was in itself. Elohim saw it was good. Verse 13, the evening and the morning were the third day. Elohim said, somebody say, he spoke the word. Come on, say, he spoke a word. Spoke Elohim said, let there be light in the light in the firmament to divide the day from night and the signs for seasons and for days and for years. Verse 15, and them and let them be the lights of the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so because he spoke it. Verse 16, Elohim then made two great lights. Right. Verse 17, Elohim set them in the firmament of the heavens. Verse 18, so they could rule over day and rule over night. Verse number 19, and the evening and the morning with the fourth day. Verse 20, Elohim then said, again, he spoke something. Let the waters bring forth abundantly. Uh-huh the moving creatures that have life and that they flow and that they fly above the earth and in the open heaven of the firmament. Verse 21, Elohim then created great whales. Verse number 22, Elohim baruch them. He blessed them saying, be fruitful, multiply, fill the, fill, fill the seas and the waters and the earth and let the fowl multiply in the earth. So if you remember Deuteronomy chapter number eight, if you remember Deuteronomy chapter number eight, he says, you cannot live. You need my word to multiply. You need my word to live. You need my word to multiply. You need my word to possess the land, I promise you. Y'all going to get this in another minute. He says, Elohim, verse 22, he blessed the fifth day, all that was in the seas. And he said to them, be fruitful and that word. Multiply. multiply. And fill the waters in the seas. Verse 23, the evening and the morning were day five. Verse 24, here we go. Watch this. Pay close attention. Don't get lost right now. Take a quick break and watch this. Elohim said, let the earth bring forth living creature after its kind, cattle, creeping thing, the beast of the earth after its kind. And it was so. Verse 25, Elohim made the beast of the earth, his kind, the cattle after their kind, everything that creeps upon the earth after its kind. Elohim then saw that it was good. Verse 26, and Elohim then said again in day six, let us make. And then he made man in his image, in his likeness. Watch this. And he said, let man have dominion over fish of the sea. He spoke that. Let man have dominion over the fowl of the air. He spoke that. Let man have dominion over the cattle. He spoke that. Let man have dominion over all the earth. He spoke that. Let man have uh, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. He spoke that. So you can't live except Elohim speaks it. You can't possess except Elohim says possess it. Verse 26 is man getting dominion because Elohim said give him dominion. Oh, I got to keep going. Verse 27. So Elohim then created man in his own image. And in the image of man, Elohim created him male and female. He created them. Verse 28. Look at what else Elohim said. Right. Elohim baruch them. Elohim blessed them. And Elohim said. Somebody say he spoke a word. He spoke a word. Spoke a word. Oh, y'all not excited. Okay, I'll be excited for y'all. Don't worry about it. Elohim spoke a word and said unto them, watch this, watch this, watch this. Be fruitful. Bring forth children. Watch this, watch this. Be fruitful. Watch this. Then he said multiply. You and I can't multiply except his word say multiply. So Devarim chapter 8 was accurate. Yeshua was right in Matthew 4. All of this comes from Torah. It didn't come from the hocus pocus moment on the mount where he was being tempted. He was proving the word. Man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh or Elohim. <laughs> Verse 28 says, and Elohim baruch them. Elohim said unto them, be fruitful, humanity. Multiply, humanity. Replenish the earth, humanity. Subdue the earth, humanity. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth, humanity. Elohim then says, I'm giving you every herb that you're going to eat. I'm giving you all of them upon the face of the earth and every tree which you're going to eat, which has, has, its, got, which has its own fruit which yields its own seed, I'm giving it to you so you will have it for me. And to every beast of the earth, every fowl of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, wherein there is life, 
which I gave already for you got here. I have given every green herb for me and it was so. So <laughs> Messiah wasn't tripping when he said this, was he? He was making it pretty clear, pretty stabilizing. He put us in a position to understand that what Elohim wanted from us was us to know his word. And if we ever knew his word, then the world would operate the way Yahweh would have it to operate. Now watch this. Let me put you on the board. As you read in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now look at the board, 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 look at the board. Now, up here we see we're going to make that Elohim. We're going to just make that known to be Elohim, right? He is in his realm. This is Elohim's realm. He's up there doing what he does, right? Now, remember, Elohim has three elements of him, right? There are three attributes we automatically associate to him. That is Yahweh, God the thought. That is Adonai, God the spoken word. And that is Ruach HaKadosh, God the word, watch this, that hastens, God the, God the spirit, the performer of the word, that hastens to the word to perform it. So when you go back to Genesis chapter number two, uh, Genesis chapter one, verse two, and the earth was without form, it was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim moved on the face of the waters. Look at what we're doing here. So this little image here, this little stick man, we're going to call this Ruach HaKadosh. He is hovering over, that's the red and the black around it. He is Elohim. He is hovering over the third rock from the sun. But he is waiting for instruction from the Adonai. And Adonai is waiting for the thought from Yahweh. No different than you and me. Before I make a sandwich, I think about it. Before I get up and go and get gas in my car, I think about it. So it's a thought and then I say, I must go. And then my body goes. But the one that thought it, the one that spoke it, and the one that performed it are still me. Y'all getting this? Yes. Now watch this because it gets even greater. When Elohim has now, through the attribute of Yahweh, thought what he wants done, Adonai takes that thought and articulates it. But here's what you find out in verse number two of the book of Genesis chapter one. And the earth was without form. It was void. There was darkness on the face of the deep. And Ruach HaKadosh moved upon the face of the waters. So Ruach HaKadosh is down here waiting. Look at the board. He is down here waiting on the earth for the word to come as to what to do with the earth. So there is no life on the earth until Elohim speaks. Man shall not live by bread alone. You don't even know what bread is until Elohim speaks bread into existence. That's why when they were in the wilderness and Yahweh said he suffered them to hunger so that the bread they were accustomed to, the grain they were accustomed to, when they didn't see it, they would think they wouldn't be fed. But he fed them bread that didn't come from their grain because his word speaks whatever we need into existence. Now, I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be hocus pocus here. I'm just telling you that his word will move mountains. His word will make way out of no way. His word will carry you through. His word will keep you in every way. His word will produce for you what appears that your science and understanding and discovery can't do. His word gives you life, not the things his word made for life. His word can give you life through different sources, not just the ones you are familiar with. And that's where you and I gotta stop thinking Elohim works in one dimension. I need to teach these lessons on On, on on a DKM program because I don't think I don't think our, our proceeding word crowd is ready for this kind of stuff in the middle of your work day. So you might want to go back and check it out. So then Elohim Yahweh thinks it. Adonai speaks it. And this is the beauty of it all. So I'm going to erase this. I'll be like this. I'll put it in a different way. I'll put it in a different way. 
So as you can tell, you see me having this descending from heaven onto the earth because Elohim is far above the earth, right? And the earth is his footstool. So Adonai, I'm going to be what we're going to look at and say, are these ones and o's right and i need y'all to get this because it's rather significant <coughs> pardon me it is rather significant everything that elohim thinks in the form of yahweh adonai speaks and ruach hakadesh performs so all of these ones and o's are Adonai coming to meet Ruach HaKadosh hovering over the earth, waiting to know the instructions so he can perform it. So man doesn't live by bread alone, but he lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Elohim. That's why Hashatan knew if Adonai was in this vessel, Yeshua, because he's been looking for this Messiah. If Adonai is in him, he knew the power of those words. He knew the word was power. And yet Yeshua, by the instruction of the word, said, just tell him man don't live by bread alone. Because any man who was under the guise of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil would have jumped at the chance to prove they could turn those stones to bread. But remember, Yeshua was not of the bloodline of Adam, was he? So he had nothing to prove. He just simply said, bro, I ain't got to prove nothing to you. Man don't live by bread alone. I ain't, I ain't that one. And so when Satan didn't get him to take the bait, he moved on to the next temptation, which helped every other man before Yeshua fall and give over their power to evil, which Satan represents. So at the end of the day, Yeshua, led by Adonai, not being of the sin nature of Adam first, but is the second Adam, obeys the word and lets this element know, this evil know that I don't have to prove anything to you. I don't need your money. Elohim holds a cattle on a thousand hill. He makes them as he needs them. Did you guys see in the text the other day that when they murmured and complained about not having meat, though they had manna that they now knew about. They were still complaining about having meat. And Yahweh made quail from the ocean. Yes. Yes. Yes, he did. Yeah. I think y'all need to let this resonate for a minute and then we'll come back to it. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I, I, don't, I don't know. So this is truth that man does not live by bread alone because man was not made until earth was performed and completed, was he? Man was made at the end of day seven. He was uh, day six, pardon me. Man was made at the end of day six, right? Man was made at the end of day six. The earth was made and completed in the middle of day six. Man was made at the end. But watch this. Everything man would need to live from was already in the earth. But not everything Let me say it this way. But everything on the earth was not the only thing man could live by. What was in the earth 
had what man could live by. But everything in the earth was not the only thing man could live by. Elohim's word could create whatever man needed to live, even the stuff that had already been there and stuff that's not already identified there. Manna was not in the earth. He brought manna to the earth. Those quails, he had already made in day five all the birds to go and live in the trees. But when they complained about food after he said, I will be that you that whatever you need, he then made quail special batch out of the waters for them to eat, get sick and die from. Now, that sounds weird. Why are you talking about God killing people? Because that's what actually happened. Man does not live by bread alone. Don't think that everything you see is the only way you're going to live. Yahweh will do something. He'll do a new thing in your life. If you possess his word. So let me get back to the context for why we came here. Devarim chapter 8. This is what we have been taught from beginning. This is the foundation for our faith. All commandments which I command you this day. Look at what he says to us. All commandments which I command you this day. Look at what he says to us. This day you shall observe to do them. Somebody say, I want to do his word. I want to do his word. Y'all don't sound real convinced about that, but he says, all, com all commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do that you may live and that you may multiply. Y'all not multiplying? Here's why. That you may possess the promised land. They dreamed about the promised land. So technically, your dreams, you can possess them. Your dreams, according to his righteousness, your dreams, according to his promises, you can possess them if you observe to do his word. You wonder why they happen for you? You out here praying for a breakthrough? Yahweh never said he's going to give you a breakthrough. Nowhere in the writ does Yahweh say he's going to give you a breakthrough. Find it. I know what they preached to you. I know what they told you. I know what I know it sounded good to preach and put into some sense of a of a of a of a, of a, of a sermon, uh, but nowhere in the word did Yahweh say he was going to give you a breakthrough. It ain't in there because he will create for you. He don't need to break down walls. He can create for you a way to go over the wall. Even David, he didn't break through a wall. He says, I will run through a troop. I will leap over a wall. Oh, y'all going to get this in a few moments. It'll hit you. So everything about Elohim is based on what his writ states. And we got so caught up in our Christian viewpoint of this, never putting the Torah into our lens so that we could see the Bible for what it intended. We missed the points. He says, all that I command you, you shall observe to do it. All that I command you, you shall observe to do it. That you may live. That's how man lives. There's no bread there. There's no meat there. Yahweh says, all that I command you shall you observe to do that you may live. Where y'all see bread at? <laughs> Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Somebody shout Torah. I need all y'all just Torah in. Type Torah. Just type it in. Torah. I live by Torah. I live. I possess by Torah. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. Torah, in him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. I, I can't make this any plainer. So all the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do that you may live and multiply and go and possess the land which Yahweh swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which Yahweh has led you these 40 years in and out of the wilderness. Watch this closely in and out of the wilderness to humble you and to prove you. So that you would know so that you would know what's in your heart. Whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you. He suffered you to hunger and then fed you with manna. 
which you knew not of because you was just stuck on what you had been introduced to. Your fathers didn't even know of this. That means that all the stuff that you didn't know that they did know, this wasn't on any of y'all registries. He did this that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, by what you see. But man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh your Elohim. That's how man lives. Now our Messiah comes back and echoes this. Matthew chapter four, look at it. Then Yeshua was led up by Ruach HaKadosh into the wilderness. Wait a minute. So Yeshua was pushed into a wild place to be tempted to see what was in his heart too? Y'all not gonna talk to me today. Y'all not gonna talk to me today. You don't see this? So that you and I would not have any issues the children of Israel was led into the wilderness to be tempted by Elohim. Yeshua was led into the wilderness to be tempted by Elohim. To prove what was in the man's heart. Y'all, come on. He, he had to, well, Yeshua was also human. He had the word in him, but Adam was also human. He had the word in him, but Adam, the first Adam, he didn't listen to the word. He did what the word said not to do. So he has to be tempted and tested just like Adam, i.e. Moshe, and them coming through the wilderness for 40 years. So he puts him in the wilderness for 40 days to see what was in Yeshua's heart. And what came out of Yeshua's heart? Only the unadulterated word of Elohim. Y'all think I made this up? Wow. Are y'all seeing this? Verse one, look at it. I didn't make it up. You just read Devadim. You read where it came from. Look at it. Look at Matthew four. Then Yeshua led up by Ruach Kakadesh. That's the that's the word, y'all. That's 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 Elohim. He wasn't led by a spirit. He was led by Ruach Kakadesh. He was led into the wild place. Wow. They led him there on purpose. So you and I would have a pure witness that the word of Elohim can bring any human out of any situation they find themselves in. And you, though tempted by the tempter, can still use the word to be the victor. That's why I rock with Yeshua, because he went through. He went for 40 days by Elohim to be tempted. To have proven what was in his heart. <laughs> Somebody said the word was all in him. The word was all in him. The word came out of him. The word was all in him. Yes. The word was all in him. The word came out of him. Look at what he does now. Look at what he does now. Look at what he does now. Look at it closely. I want you all to pay attention to it. Verse number one. He was led by Ruach HaKadosh into the wild place to be tempted of Hashatan. Verse two, and when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So the tempter used this as an opportunity to say, hmm, he's human. If he's supposed to be the Messiah, then that means the word of Elohim is in him. So he says to him, verse three, if you be Adonai, command these stones be made bread. <laughs> But he answered and said, watch this, without giving himself away. Look at how Adonai played Satan. Look at how Adonai played Satan. I get excited when I read the writ. Are y'all excited? Listen, hold it, stop. Shh, don't say nothing. Wait a minute. <laughs> he looks Satan right in his face through the flesh suit of Yeshua while Satan is trying to see if this is the Messiah prophesied. Because if he had known it was the Messiah prophesied, he would never have killed him. Theologians let that sink in. Those of you who don't know what I just said, it's okay. Those that know what I said, know what I said. Listen, so he says, he said, he says, he says, tell me if you be Adonai in a flesh suit, Command that stone, because I see you hungry, flesh suit. And if Adonai is in you, then let Adonai 
turn that stone into some bread so you can eat. Adonai speaks through the vessel of Yeshua at the enemy of faith trying to see if he is the prophecy, the omen. And he says to him without giving himself away, look at this. Without giving himself away. I'm too excited. I got to calm down to tell this with y'all because y'all not going to get it. So Adonai looks through the vessel that he is in called Yeshua. Unto us a child was born. Yeshua. Unto us a son was given. Adonai. Their name would be called wonderful, right? So Adonai looks through the vessel of Yeshua at the enemy trying to find out if Adonai is in Yeshua and says to the enemy, it's written. <laughs> it's already written. You can't catch me. We already wrote this down for humanity. <laughs> I ain't got to speak a word. It's already written. He can speak it, so you're not going to be able to tell if it's me or not. That's what he really did to me. He looked at him like, you, 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 you can't trick me, young. young. I made you. So here's the deal. It's written. Do y'all know why it's important for him to say it is written? Go back and review it. I know it, it, it'll take a minute for you to put the sink in. He says, and verse four says, but he says an answer to him. Let me read it again for the sense for, for the sake of everybody getting it. Look at verse, verse, verse one. Yeshua was led by the spirit. Verse two, when he was fasted 40 days, he was hungry. Verse three, when the tempter came, he said, if you be son of Elohim, command these stones be made bread. And he said unto him, it is written. Humanity shall not live by bread alone. But humanity shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Elohim. He gave him an answer without giving himself away. <laughs> All right. Wow. Y'all don't get it. Do y'all get it? Nobody get it? Y'all really don't get this? Look. Because if he had given himself away, Satan would have stopped right there and never had crucified the son of glory. Wow. If they would have known that he was the Messiah, if they would have known he was the son of Elohim, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. That's what Satan was doing. You're trying to figure out who he was. Man, this stuff blows my mind. Look, so if he had found out then, he would not have done verse five. So then the devil took him up, figuring he's just another human like Moshe, another human like Adam, another human like Samson, another human like David, who can be tempted with something. I ain't getting him on the food thing, but I'm going to get him with this next piece. I'm going to get him with power. So the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said, if you be the son of Elohim, cast yourself down. Oh, since you told me about it being written, because it's written, he shall give his angels, his angels charge over you, and they will cast you and bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Yeshua then said to him, oh, 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 it is written again. <laughs> Thou shalt not tempt. Look at what he says. Thou shalt not tempt Adonai, your Elohim. Notice it's not all caps. Come on, people, this ain't makeup, this ain't make-believe. It's been in your Bible the whole time. Nobody? Are y'all all right out there? Did everybody pass out? I'm on fire. <laughs> Did y'all pass out? Everybody there? Yeah, no, we're Hello? Y'all out there? Y'all okay? We're okay. We're out there. He says, if he had been, if he had known, they would have never crucified him. So look what he says. Verse 12, the verse, verse, I gotta get done here. Verse 7 says, Yeshua said, it's written again. You shall not tempt Adonai your Elohim. He told him directly, Satan. You don't tempt Adonai your Elohim. Y'all don't get it. Listen, why is it even deeper? We don't have a napkin ministry to pick y'all up. So if you fall down, you got to get up on your own. I would suggest you sit down and then lean back. Just lean with it and rock with it. 
don't 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 be erect and then fall down. I don't want y'all to. Be, so, but, but watch. Notice you have seen it's been said so many times by Christendom saying, watch this, saying, "Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your the Lord your the, the Lord your God." Who was he talking to? We made it like he was talking to us. And though it is in the Torah, but when Yeshua was talking to Satan, trying to get him to do something contrary, he looked at him and said, yeah, you want an answer. You're still trying to find out who it is. But here's the catch. Uh, it's written. You try to tell me it was written already. Yeah, it's written that angels will take charge of me. It sure is written, but it's also written again. So he ain't making up something as he goes along. This is already prescribed. He says it is written. Adonai is saying to Shatan. Yes, it is also written again because I wrote it. It's also written again. You who I created shall not tempt your Elohim. All right, y'all got to go back and view that because I'm not going to sit here and, and drag y'all through the mud with that. I'm not going to drag y'all through that. If y'all didn't get it, it'll, it'll hit y'all when the time is right. Yahweh knows when. One man plants, another man waters. Elohim will add the increase. I hope that made sense to y'all. Let me say it again. He is not telling. He is not telling you and I. He is telling Satan in his face. You don't tempt me, boy. <laughs> So good. All right, all right, let me move on. Look at what happens. So he gets himself checked, right? He gets chin checked. Verse 8 says, so he couldn't figure it out from that point. Verse 8 then goes on to say, watch what he does, and I got to get done here. Verse 8 says, and again, Hashatan took him up to an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said, hey, of all these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Yeshua said, get your butt out of here. I'm sorry, that's the BWJ translation. He said, uh, then said Yeshua to him, get thee hence, Satan. What's the next words he used, y'all? It is written. It is written. So man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. And the word is written. The word is spoken. The word is written. It is written. Thou shalt not worship. Thou shalt worship. Adonai your Elohim and him only shalt you serve. So does it say Yahweh your Elohim? Mm -mm. He says thou shalt worship Adonai your Elohim, which is the word of Elohim and him only shalt thou serve. Why? Because the word is what you must do in order to be pleasing to the father. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. <sighs> oh. Wow. So I'm to worship the word of Elohim and observe to do it. Maybe that's what he meant in Devarim chapter number eight when he made that statement. And he says, all the commandments I command you this day shall you observe to do in order for you to live. I'll repeat it again. All the commandments, the Torah, the words, where it's written, all the commandments, all the mitzvahs, I command you this day shall you observe to do in order that you may live, in order that you may multiply, in order that you may go in and possess the promised land. All right, I am aware y'all at work, so you're probably preoccupied. I would suggest going back over this and listening to it in the quiet time of your day. Father, I thank you for the ability to articulate your word as you have given it. I pray you that it has been done immaculately according to your plan and your will. Anything spoken in error, 
anything spoken out of eisegetics or subjectiveness, I pray you now remove and strike from record, but only those things spoken in the clarity and the intention of your direction and plan and instructions of your Torah. Let them resonate, let them marinate on the hearts and souls and the hearing of your people. He that hath an ear, let him hear where your word says unto our tabernacles, which come down from heaven. This we pray. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, for your word is how we live. By you and you alone, do we have hope? Do we have peace? Do we have power? Do we have life? Are we able to multiply? Are we able to possess the land that you have promised us? And we thank you for this. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior and our King. And we bless you forevermore. Well, we're going to give you guys an announcement before we let you go. I want you to remember, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh, who is our Elohim. Love you to life eternal. You guys have a great day, a wonderful time. Shalom. Place for you, don't need to complicate it. It's best to keep it basic. Uh, open the book, the word is self approved. He's Alpha and Omega, the answer since the early ages. What you should do is learn about the greatest. Just so you know, our door is always open. Let's study together instead of debating. Share our differences, let love heal all that's broken.